everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Today we're going to be doing part two of the review slash haul video of all the items that Nature's Garden Candles sent to me. And so today we're going to be reviewing the second half of the fragrance oils and then we're going to be making a soy wax candle using the candle products that they sent. So I'm super excited about this video. I can't wait to review these. I haven't smelled them yet, so let's dive right in. Um, the first one I'm going to pick up is called Bite Me and it's got a super cute little label on it. Looks like little Dracula teeth. And I have never smelled this or used it, so I'm super excited. Mmm, that smells right off the bat like, I'm getting like a lemon, a lime, a cherry, like a citrusy cherry um, fragrance with uh, kind of like a effervescent, like a Sprite or 7-Up. It really actually kind of reminds me of a Cherry 7-Up. If you've ever had one of those, right when you crack it open, when you get that effervescent bubbly smell with the cherry and the citrus, oh, it smells so good. Okay, so let's take a look at what they say. Um, they say the top notes are black cherry, orange, strawberry, pineapple, and lime. Definitely picked up on the lime and the black cherry. Um, the mid notes are eucalyptus, violet, and lily, and the base notes are clove and vanilla bean. Um, they have a cute little description here that says Dracula would fall in love with this fragrance oil by Nature's Garden. Uh, fresh citrus notes of lime and orange sparkle with effervescent highlights as they lead to a luscious blend of berry and cherry in this playful scent. Yeah, so I definitely pick up on the effervescence and the cherry and the berry. Um, super good. Smells good. Okay, the next one I'm going to smell for you is called Green Apple Explosion. And actually, I have bought this one and used it in cold process soap before. It sticks really well in cold process soap. I had no acceleration issues, so it works really good. Mm, okay, so yeah, this one smells exactly like a green Jolly Rancher candy, the sour apple kind. Exactly like that to me. Um, and when I made my soap with it, I actually put little melt and pour embeds. I think I still have some left on my website uh, that were cut to the shape and size of like Jolly Rancher candies. And I called it green apple candy. And uh, it'd be a great kid fragrance. Um, or if you're a grown up and you like the smell of that sour apple, like I do, um, it's a good fragrance. Very strong, a little bit goes a long way. Um, let's take a look. It says, we believe we have we believe we have quite possibly found the spunkiest green apple fragrance oil on earth. We thought about calling it Granny Smith Apple, but this fragrance deserves a name that pops just like its aroma. Thus, may we present Green Apple Explosion. Uh, it's a Nature's Garden original fragrance. Um, be a really good uh, fragrance oil to use with a kid project or if you just like that tart, juicy green apple um, fragrance. Super strong. Okay, the next one I'm gonna pick up is called Camu Camu, and I have never um, smelled this one or tried it before, but um, it looks really cute on the label. So let's go ahead and give it a smell. Mmm. Fruity, right off the bat, melon. I'm kind of getting that like honeydew melon. Um, Fragrance mixed with other fruits, probably like, mm, peaches and melon. I can't exactly describe this one, but it smells really fruity and really juicy and definitely has like a melon base note to it. So let's go ahead and say, see what they say. Um, also, it's pretty strong. It smells good. Okay, so the top notes are plum, mixed berries, pineapple, banana, apple, orange, and lime. The middle notes are jasmine, rose, and peach. So I did pick up on that peach. Um, and come to think of it now, I can smell that jasmine as well. Yeah, the floral note is definitely stronger with the jasmine, and I definitely am picking up on the peach. Mixed berries, pineapple, and apple, I'm definitely picking up on, and the lime. Um, there's green notes for the base notes, yes. Definitely smell the green notes, and vanilla. 
Mm, that one smells really good. Actually smells like something you would use in like, I don't know some, about you, but sometimes when I smell a fragrance, especially for the first time, I'll get an idea of like, oh, that would work really well in this product, or this one would work really well in this product. And when I smell this one, it automatically reminds me of like a loofah glycerin soap, you know, because you can put the bright colors in it and it's translucent and then you see the little loofahs inside. So that's what this fragrance reminds me of, one that you would use for a glycerin loofah soap. I don't know why, but that's probably what I'll do with this one. Okay, and then the next one I'm gonna be smelling is Coconut Lime Verbena. And this one, um, I have picked up one like this from a different company before, but I've never smelled Nature's Garden Candles version of Coconut Lime Verbena. So let's give it a smell. Mm. Definitely picking up on that coconut right off the bat. Um, the line is coming through strong. And then it's got kind of a back note of that like verbena, that like lemon verbena tea kind of green, green notes to it, but also very citrusy. So let's go ahead and see what they say. Okay, so for this one, the top notes are orange, coconut, bergamot, pineapple, lime, grapefruit, and lemon. Definitely was picking up on the coconut, bergamot, um, and lime, yes. Um, middle notes are Island Air, um, Cyclamen, Lily, Jasmine, and Kumquat. I do smell Kumquat in this one. You know how Kumquats have that um, kind of bitter smell in their peel? Definitely picking up on that a little bit here. And then the base notes are Palm Leaves, so there's the green, Vanilla Bean, and Sandalwood and Musk. Yeah, this is definitely a more intense coconut lime verbena than from the other company that I've ordered it from before. Um, this just seems to have more depth to it. It's got a more lime um, green uh, intensity to it and a little less on the coconut. So this is actually a really good citrusy coconut blend. Um, I like this one. And this one is also a Nature's Garden bestseller. Okay, the next one I'm gonna smell is Merlot wine. Now, I really contemplated last time whether I was gonna use this one or the lavender martini, and I um, actually didn't smell this one, so I decided, well, I'll be making the soap with the lavender martini, and that's when we did the champagne soap last time. Um, so, because I really wanted to do a, a red wine soap, and I thought, oh, how perfect, we'll use Merlot wine. But I actually haven't smelled it yet, so let's give it a smell. Oh, that smells really grape uh, juice fragrance. That's what I'm smelling. I'm smelling grape juice, except not exactly. It's not as, um, I'm not picking up on any alcohol notes in this at all, um, at least for me. I am smelling kind of just like a grapey, I can't explain it, but I like a purpley, grapey fragrance. It's pleasant, I'm just not sure it smells like Merlot wine. Um, but then again, maybe you really wouldn't want your products to smell like Merlot wine, right? Okay, so that smells really good. And I can see how you could use it in a, in a wine soap because it is very grapey and fruity. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, what they say. Okay, so the Merlot, Fragrance oil says this fragrance oil by Nature's Garden has velvety nuances of plums, apples, red raspberries, and strawberries, which combine with a light alcoholic spicy background, a wonderful aroma of red Merlot wine. This is an original Nature's Garden scent. Okay, so it's going to be really interesting to see how this you know how you smell things out of the bottle and then you use them in a product and they sm can smell completely different? Um, this will be interesting to see how it settles in candles um, and soaps because I am not getting an alcohol note at all and I'm not getting all of those fruit notes that are mentioned. So maybe those will come out more pronounced when you actually make the product. I'm really just smelling juicy purple grapes, but it smells good. All right, 
This one, black raspberry vanilla, I actually have ordered and used um, quite a bit from Nature's Garden Candle. It's the best, the best black raspberry vanilla, you guys. Mm, and I've actually used it in soy wax candles before. Um, this one smells like, it's like that like black raspberry, blackberry with like vanilla ice cream. It's got a little bit of a bakery note to it but not overpowering bakery note. It almost smells like, you definitely get that vanilla, light bakery note, black tart black raspberry. Oh, it smells so good. And the awesome thing about this one is it does not discolor your soap. I've used it lots of times and it doesn't speed up um, trace or anything like that in cold process soap. I've used it in body butters, I've used it in cold process soap, and I believe I've used it in sugar scrubs. Such a good, black raspberry vanilla. So what they say is the top notes are lemon, raspberry, blackberry, strawberry, and coconut. Definitely picking up on the raspberry, blackberry, raspberry, strawberry. The lemon is that is that um, tartness I was picking up on. Peach, violet, and honeysuckle for the mid notes. And then the base notes are plum, blossoms, musk, and vanilla. Awesome fragrance. Okay, last but not least, I was saving this one because I'm a huge lover of pumpkins and all things pumpkins. Um, this one is called pumpkin cheesecake. And I know, I know people, you're either a pumpkin person or you're not. That's kind of what I've found out in life. Either you're a pumpkin person or you're not. I am a major pumpkin person. So let's see how this one holds up. I love the pumpkin apple butter from Nature's Garden. Um, that's one of my most favorite pumpkin ones. So this one is pumpkin cheesecake. Let's see. Oh my God. Oh my God. This one is going to have to be used in my pumpkin line next year for the fall. I cannot believe how good that smells. Mmm, that smells so good. I'm getting like a strong pumpkin pie smell. A really strong kind of pumpkin pie. Really, uh, bakery notes with pumpkin. The spice from the pumpkin pie along with the bakery like type crust. And then I'm getting that like dense, rich cheesecake on the back note. Oh my God, that smells so good. Okay, so their notes say, who can resist pumpkin cheesecake? This fragrance oil by Nature's Garden is the incredible aroma of cardamom. Definitely picking up on the cardamom, the ground cinnamon, Vermont apple, pumpkin puree, carrot. Yeah, it's got the, like a carrot cake. That's the bakery note I'm picking up on. A carrot cake, whipped cream, rum, yep. Cream cheese, definitely picking up on that rum note and it's it's good, like it's not, it's not too strong. Cream cheese, caramelized sugar, and French vanilla, which is all blended to true perfection. It says this fragrance oil is darker than most of our fragrance oils due to the aroma chemicals used to make it. Okay, now that is gonna make an awesome candle. I cannot decide which one to use, but I will bring you right back when we're ready to make um, candles. Okay, we're getting prepared to make the soy wax candles and I have decided to go with the black raspberry and vanilla fragrance oil. I know, shocker, because the pumpkin cheesecake is calling my name. But you guys have already seen me make a pumpkin candle using orange um, candle dye. And Nature's Garden sent me a bunch of candle dyes to try out. So I wanted to show you something a little bit different than what I've already tried. So I'm going to be using the Spectrum Color candle dye in purple for the black raspberry and vanilla. And we're going to be using the Soy Wax soy wax 444 it comes in um, flake form and basically these are the details on the wax it says golden brown soy wax 444 is a container candle soy wax that has a natural soy based additive that helps the candle absorb more fragrance oil and helps to reduce soy wax frosting golden brands 444 soy wax will melt more slowly than golden brands 464 soy wax due to its higher melt point this soy wax is also used by some of our customers for candle tarts. Um, so one of the reasons people really like to use soy wax is because 
Um, it supports the American farmer. And this soy wax, these soybeans to make this soy wax were grown in the USA. So it does support your American farmer to buy soy wax um, to make your soy wax candles. Also, it's non-petroleum based. I know some people have and take issue with petroleum um, or paraffin based candles uh, because petroleum is a byproduct of gasoline. Um, soy wax is obviously totally plant based and supports the American farmer and it's super easy to clean up. I used to make soy wax candles exclusively for years and years and years. And when you spill soy wax candle or you need to clean it up, um, hot soapy water is all you need. Real hot soapy water is all you need to clean it up. So there's definite benefits to using soy wax. Um, we're gonna give this brand a try and see how it goes. Okay, we're back to go ahead and measure out. Now the containers I'm using, I'm gonna be doing two candles um, because I have never used this wax before. I just wanna make sure I'm not making a really big batch um, so that I can make any tweaks and adjustments. So this is a test burn really for me. So my jars are equaling 20 ounces um, in, vo in liquid volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and weigh out my 20 ounces. Okay, so if you've guys seen any of my other videos, you know that I'm big on manufacturer's directions, especially the first time you're using a product. That way, um, you know if you've done it exactly the way they've said to do it and you still are having performance issues, maybe it's just not the product for you or you wanna try something different. So the manufacturer's directions on this brand from Nature's Garden um, says to melt down the wax to 185 degrees. So that is what we're gonna go ahead and do. Okay, so we went ahead and melted the wax down to exactly 185 degrees and now we're ready to add the color. So um, the candle dye that I'm gonna be using again is the Spectrum Color Candle Dye in Purple. And this is a highly concentrated um, form of uh, candle colorant. And so you, a little bit goes a long way. So you don't need to use a lot at all. I'm just gonna take my little cap off here um, the directions on the Nature's Garden website for the colorant just says to use to your specifications. Um, but I am going to start out with two drops and see how that goes. Uh, anything you add to your candle is going to affect burn quality and how it burns. So you just want to be careful. Less is more a lot of the time. Um, so that looks pretty dark. You saw how dark that went right away. I'm just gonna lift up my white, try to keep this here, lift up my white spatula to see if we can see what color we're gonna get. Oh, that's kind of tough to see. Um, it's not gonna cure as dark as this, but it's definitely gonna be darker than what's showing on my, on my spatula here. So what we can do is take a little tiny bit um, and pour it into, we're gonna just pour it into this little plastic container here and let it just kind of sit Okay, I'm gonna pour a tiny bit into there. And then um, in the meantime, while we're letting that kind of, you can see the color that it is right there. Um, while we're letting this cool, 
So basically on this, you're not gonna be adding your fragrance oil in right away. Uh, it has specific notes on fragrance oil, on when to add it. So it says, when you're using the Nature's Garden fragrance oils, heavier fragrances, fragrances with a higher flash point can be added at 185 degrees. Lighter fragrances, fragrances with a lower flash point, such as citrus type fragrances, should be added at around 160 degrees. Um, so I'm actually gonna wait on this one to into the 160 range. Black raspberry vanilla is a stronger smell to me, but it definitely has those lighter kind of fruit notes, so I'm gonna wait. Um, to add it and the reason why they say that higher flash point or heavier fragrances with like vanillin and um, bakery notes and things like that uh, heavy vanilla fragrances you can't add them at a higher um, temperature because they're not going to burn off as quickly uh, citrus notes are kind of top notes they have a lot of top notes in the citrus type fragrances and they're lighter and they're more fleeting. And if you add them to your wax and your wax is too hot, it could burn off a lot of those top notes and then your candle won't have a great um, fragrance to it. So I'm gonna wait till I'm in the 160 range so we're not burning off any of this um, black raspberry and vanilla and I'll bring you back when we're ready to add the fragrance oil. Okay, we're sitting right at 160 degrees, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my black raspberry and vanilla fragrance oil. Um, go ahead and add that in now. There we go. So I'm adding in exactly two ounces of fragrance oil and this is per 20 ounces of soy wax, 444. So the reason I'm adding two ounces is because in their recommendations, it says that you should be adding an ounce and a half of fragrance oil to one pound of wax, which is roughly ex almost exactly a 10% fragrance load. So I am using 20 ounces. So I um, am gonna go by percentages because I'm going um, a little bit more than a pound. So I'm using 20 ounces of the soy wax 444 and I'm using 10% fragrance oil load, which is exactly 10% of 20 ounces is two ounces. So we're using two ounces exactly. And I'm just gonna stir and stir and make sure we're incorporating this, kind of scraping the sides. Um, as I go. This wax also, it says you're not to pour it until you allow it to cool at room temperature. And then once you reach 110 degrees, that's when you should um, pour it. It says your wax will be in a slightly slushy in appearance. So it's gonna have a slight slushy appearance to it and it should be sitting at 110 degrees before you pour it. Um, so while this is cooling, let me go ahead and check my temperature right now. Okay, we're still at 145 even after I added in that fragrance. It smells really good. Um, while it's cooling over here, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my jar choice. I already have my jars wicked, and I'll talk about my jars and my wicks. So I just picked up these cute little Quattro um, jars from Target in a little six pack. Um, this is sort of like a mason jar type, except the brand is called Quattro. Um, really kind of cute little jelly jar design here. Um, it's got a wider top than bottom. So um, I wanted to use these just so you could see how the color sets up uh, in this container. And also I wanted you to see if we're following the manufacturer's directions um, perfectly on pour temperature, a lot of you guys ask me a lot about when you get wet spots in your candle or when it looks like the wax is not all the way adhered to the jar. I get questions about that almost daily. So um, my response to that is really, really watch your pour temperature. Sometimes it's just the, the type of wax you're using and it's a flaw and you just have to learn to live with it or not use that wax anymore. 
but a lot of times it has everything to do with poor temperature. And so we're gonna follow the directions exactly and we'll see how good our glass adhesion is, which is really um, easy to see when you're using clear glass containers. So these are three inches in diameter across and I'm using the Hemp Wicks, the Hemp Wicks 60048 and I've already marked it with the um, diameter, 3.5 to four inch. Now I know I said these are three inch in diameter um, that's because they are, but when you use soy wax, you want to wick up. Um, soy wax is far more viscous and thick than paraffin-based waxes. So when it says three inches in diameter for a paraffin or even a paraffin blend wax, you really want to follow those, those directions. But when, you, when you're using um, a wick for a soy wax candle, if your diameter is three inches, on the jar, on the whitest part, you want to wick up. So what that means is you're going to go a half an inch to an inch over um, the actual diameter. So this is recommended for a three and a half to four inch candle and our diameter is three inches. So we're wicking up um, half to a half an inch to an inch. So that way you're going to get a clean even burn pool. It's not going to tunnel. Um, hopefully, I've never used these hemp wicks or this wax, so this is a bit of an experiment, but if I know anything about candles, this should work out just fine. And um, the hemp wicks are said to burn a little bit hotter. And when you're using 100% soy wax, you do need your wicks to burn a little bit hotter because, again, soy wax is more viscous and more thick than your paraffin or your paraffin blend type waxes. All right, I'll bring you right back when we're ready to pour. Okay, we're back and the wax is sitting right at 110 degrees, which is the recommended pour temperature, but I wanted to show you this real quick. So I did go ahead and pop that little bit of wax that we um, poured into this container and I popped it in the um, fridge so it would cool and you could see what color we're gonna get. That's a little trick to see what color you're gonna get. Um, when you make candles, you can pour off a little bit pop it in the fridge for a few minutes and then you're gonna get the solidified wax and that is the color that these candles are gonna be when they're fully um, cooled, which is a nice pastel purple, which is, which is good. I'm not gonna add any more color to that. Just wanna see how this works. Okay. It smells awesome in here. All right. So here we go, this is my favorite part of candle making, is when you get to pour it into your jars. You just wanna pour it, not directly on the wick, um, but as close to the center as you can, and not too fast and not too slow. Ta-da! Okay, there you go. Now here's where you wanna make any adjustments on your wig, just kinda of make sure it's center. Um, you know, this is a little off, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. Pour off a smidge more here. There we go. Okay, so we're just gonna let these sit at room temperature. Um, you can, it's kind of hard to see. I guess I can um, bring you down and show you here real quick. What I wanted to show you is how, when you pour it super cool, I'm gonna try to bring you close to the inside here. You can see how the edges are already like adhering to the glass and how the outsides are already a little bit of a different color and the, check out the bottom. See the bottom is already starting to lighten up and cool and cure um, compared to the top and the middle. So you can definitely see that glass adhesion starting to happen. Okay, I will um, bring you back to show you a time lapse of how this burns and when these candles are fully cured. Okay, so here's the finished product. Um, as you can see, it has really good glass adhesion. I would definitely recommend um, 
pouring it right at the 110 degree mark. Uh, also, the top, smooth finish on the top, no caving in at the wick, no cracking. Um, it just looks really good. So there is a small wet spot over here on this side in case you guys were wondering what that looks like because I do get questions on that uh, almost every day. Um, there is one small wet spot on this side. That's just basically where the candle didn't adhere to the glass um, like it did on the rest of the jar. And actually, if you let that sit for a few more days or a week, those can sometimes go away on their own. Um, the other one that I poured had no wet spots at all, but I already lit that one, so I didn't get a chance to show you um, that the glass adhesion on that one was perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave you with a time-lapse video of how this candle burns. Whoa. Whoa. 